saw an issue. Uh, we saw a big fire on a caravan site. Uh, So today we're over at the Gailey site at the Dobbies and just going to do a bit of an update. We're going to nip over to uh, Garden Village then and we're going to be doing some tips throughout the way. So we've got our nice big banner sort of as your entrance on. We've got a bit of a fence up now. We've started to clad the office. Um, so we're going to sort of clad a bit more of the office. Um, I'm just going to run through sort of what our plans are today. We're going to have a look at a few bits and bobs as we go through and a few tips as I say. So I think we're going to clad at the moment up until sort of continue that cladding on up to about here and then see whether we think that we need to put more on or not and see how that's looking. Started to get a good setup of the of the vans now. We've not we've not got a huge amount. We're still not going to have a huge amount. We're going to try and build this site up nice and slowly. So we're going to try and do all the motorhomes from here. I think we've got one more motorhome to bring over. Um, but as it is, isn't it sold that one that's, we were going to bring over? Not sure. I need to check. It's on hold, so we'll see. Um, but we've got the little Roma home over here. So again, we'll just have a quick look through the different vans that we've got in. So this is sort of a single bed, uh, little compact Roma home. It's got a proper cassette toilet, shower, little sink unit and what have you. Um, it's a bit tricky on the beds. Um, it's single beds or it makes into a double, but the double part is a bit, a bit tricky. But it's a great little compact unit, that one. Uh, completely other end of the spectrum then is the, the Auto Roller 747. Now have a quick look in that one. This is a big six berth. Um, Big motorhome, but it's actually still only three and a half ton, believe it or not. I can't believe this is only three and a half tonnes. Yeah. Absolutely huge. It is, it is a big one. So this has just come over. We've just brought this what over from bed? Garden Village. Yeah, this bed drops down. This makes into a double bed over here, double bed at the back, uh, spinning split seats on the side. So this has just come over, so we're just going to get this cleaned up over this next few days. Uh, and then we've got the little auto cruise... A um, little bit older, done a fair few miles this one, about 80,000 miles, but it's sort of 23,995. So, uh, again, not a bad little start, a good little layout as well. Yeah, good, good little layout. So, uh, the plan is to do sort of more motorhomes and try and build the motorhomes up. I think we've already sold two, potentially three motorhomes, um, and we've only been open a couple of weeks. So caravans are going well, we're obviously always going to, I think caravans are going to be our big main one, but um, obviously we want to try and build on that motorhome side of it. So, uh, got a nice 590, this is a nice five berth layout. So I'll have a quick look in this one. And um, we got somebody the other week that they were having trouble with their fridge, it just wasn't cooling down properly. So we'd sort of gone through different things and then it ended up that they hadn't actually got the caravan level. Um, the caravan was sort of just slightly too unlevel for the fridge to actually work properly. So if you have problems with your fridge, um, just make sure that you actually get the caravan as level as possible. Spirit level on the floor is a good one. Um, that's probably a good way to do it because your floor is sort of what everything else is based off of rather than going off anything else or possibly even the worktop. Your worktop should be the same level as your floor. So, um, But yeah, just make sure that your caravan is actually level um, so that that fridge then can actually put the gases through it and work actually properly. I can remember that from when I bought a caravan. Yeah, it's... Years ago, it's, it's it's a difficult one because a lot of new people, uh, if you're on a really, really uneven slope and you haven't got quite enough blocks to raise up the legs and what have you, you sort of have to uh, make it up as you go along. But then if it's not quite level, then yeah, it's just not going to work properly. And again, a way to double check whether, um, sometimes if you think, oh, my fridge isn't working on uh, the 230, um, is, it, is my fridge knackered, is it not working, is it working? Put it on the gas. Uh, or vice versa, if it's not, doesn't seem to be working on the gas, try it on the electric. Uh, we'll have a look in this little Madrid. So again, always just try it on the opposite way, um, because it could be that if the element has gone, um, somebody's been trying to turn the fridge on, uh, gas on, on, on electric on that one. Um, so if the element has gone, 
but it's not full, coming up with any faults. Try it on the on the gas. So if it's not working on the electric, try it on the gas. And again, if you can't seem to get it working, or it doesn't seem to be getting cold on the gas, try it on the electric. And that should then sort of give you an idea. If it's not working on both, make sure the caravan is level. And then if you've tried all that, it, it could be a, a new fridge job, unfortunately. So uh, a difficult, lovely, lovely little full berth this, oh, isn't it? Or, it's it's a really, really funky, funky yeah, kitchen. Nice, um, like, uh, glasses cabinet. Yes, yeah. So a nice little cabinet there. Um, marks in the in the sinks. Um, another little tip. We've done our um, magic sponges. We, we called them the two thousand pound sponges, didn't we? Uh, you need to wet these up, but these work really well on the stainless steel. Uh, and even when you've got a coloured sink, you have to be careful if it's like an enamel sort of coloured uh, sink because they will damage and it will it's like an abrasive basically so it will take off the um the paint finish basically but these will normally a bit of uh, sort of soapy water on them and these will clean up the uh your stainless steel sort of things really really well we've shown you these before on the outside bits and bobs uh, and i think what we're going to do is pop over to the garden village branch and we'll have a look at what else is over there and see if we've got any more tips for you over there as well and we're back over at Garden Village and um, there's a reason that I've got a, well there's a couple of reasons that I've got this extension cable in my hands. Uh, one reason is we've got no power today and it's ruined everything. I don't know how many times I'm going to plug things in and try and power things and then realise that we haven't actually got any power to do that. So, yeah, what's going on? Um, so, we, um, I forgot what I was going to say now. We've got the power banks, haven't we? Uh, but typically they're in the van over at Gailey and I'm in the truck today. So uh, I can't even use that. We've got, we've got two power banks there that we could have powered things with and typically I've not got them. So that's just typical. And um, the other reason that I've got this, a uh, nice little uh, fixed single bed, this one, nice big fridge freezer, uh, tw just under 20, 19,995. And it's a 2016, this one. Have you seen the boss washroom in this one? Nice, nice van. Now, um, we saw an issue. Uh, we saw a big fire on a caravan site uh, last week. Well, we didn't see it personally. Well, we saw some videos of it. And that brings me on to why I've got this. Um, we might be stopping here because I've got customers coming on the pit, so we might be stopping in here for a minute, so. Um, Obviously, hopefully, you know about your mains lead when you got onto the site. If you've got it on a coil, unreal it, make sure that it's all unreeled and it's not on the reel still. But what happened on the caravan site, from, from what we've been told, is that somebody decided to charge their electric car. Um, they're in a remote part of, of Wales, there's no electric charging points, they're in an electric car. I think this is something that we're going to see more of over the next coming years. Um, now, the caravan site had specifically said no charging electric cars. Um, you cannot charge vehicles on our caravan site. You cannot charge your electric car. But unfortunately, somebody had gone along with an extension lead in the awning, um, plugged into the caravan. And I'm not saying that this is definitely what happened, but it's a good chance that happened is there's a good chance that sometimes when you plug in and you use an extension lead, you forget that it's the same rules. We should be uncoiling um, the, the cable. And I'm not saying that this is what happened. And I'm not saying that if it had have been uncoiled, it would have stopped it. But it just brought to light that actually sometimes we'll plug in with an electric extension lead like this. Um, you'll plug whatever it is that you're using into and forget about it. Even if you've got an electric lead like this, uh, it needs to be uncoiled before you use it. Exactly the same as your mains lead. If you've got a lot of power going through, it's going to cause a fire. So, um, hope, well, every, everyone was okay, um, but somebody that was next to the caravan lost all of their caravan and all of their belongings, obviously. So. Yeah, uh, not tired. not nice and not something that we sort of want to be seeing. So, number one, if you're going to plug in anything, make sure even an extension lead like this, it is uncoiled. Uh, and number two, follow the rules of the campsite. If if there is rules on the campsite, um, 
make sure that you follow them. It's it's not the caravan out or the caravan site owners trying to be difficult or tough or they've put the rules in place to stop accidents happening, which it, if the rules would have been listened to on that particular site, um, it wouldn't have happened. Um, obviously, the person that did it, they've lost their caravan or the rolling. Don't know what happened to the electric. Did the car go up as well? So, uh, But then even worse than that is the neighbours that it wasn't even their fault it they were nothing they it didn't it wasn't their mishap um wrongdoing that caused but they've lost everything so just an eye opener um just an eye opener that rules are there for a reason um if you're going to use an extension lead make sure that it's undone um there are some that have got protection in them as well aren't they would that stop it, no, or it, not it, still not really because it can still by the time this has got to a point where it's sort Not of possibly sure. set on fire the protection then cuts out yeah but there's a good chance that it's going to cause start. a fire so yeah normally we're very light-hearted and we'll try and make a joke and but it's not a joking matter it's it's very it's it's really serious it's the other thing is they say that um not to plug electric car charging leads into an extension cable yeah it shouldn't be it gone shouldn't into go them definitely into the definitely mains. not into the caravan and again it is something that's going to happen more so electric car owners have just got to be aware of what they can and how they can do it and how they can't do it um but yeah normally we're trying to we'll try and make a light hearted joke and a bit have a bit of a laugh and um but it's it's quite a serious thing so it's it's just something that yeah um just rules are there um not to be broken uh, you've got to listen to the rules they're there for a reason um sometimes it might seem that the site owners are being a bit funny or being awkward or but it, it, there's a reason so always just double check the rules on the campsite um and on that note we will see you next week thanks for watching i'm mark at the caravan place <laughs>